everyone, it's Sean here from Full Compass, and we're in studio with Christopher Melendi from Allen & Heath, and we are talking about an exciting new update to the Q-Series. This is an upgrade to our existing Q-Series. However, everything has been built basically from the ground up new. So it's that same iconic design that people are used to, Yep. Uh, but with all new technology inside. We're now using our 96 kilohertz FPGA technology that has come down from both our DLive and our Avantis lines, and we've put that into this really affordable package. I see that there's three different sizes in the series. So you wanna give me a little quick rundown of what the differences are? Right, essentially we have three different models with two variants of each. Okay. So there's the Q5, the Q6, and the Q7. Those get larger as the numbers get larger. And then we have D versions of each of those models. So What's the D for? The D stands for Dante. So oh, now sweet. we have built-in Dante in three of the units. So does the Q5, which doesn't have Dante built in, the okay. Q5D does have Dante built in so there's that q6 q60 q7 and the q7d so for each one of them you have a non-dante variant and the dante variant what's the difference between the five six seven essentially it's just the number of faders okay what we did with the new q is that all of them can mix 32 channels they all have three other stereo inputs as well all right but unlike the older product where you might be limited by the number of faders on the board for example you could mix 16 channels with the q16 yep. all of these can do the full 32 channels internally it's all the same mix engine you're just changing the size depending upon what your application might be so for example the q5 is is rack mountable you can get a rack mount good with it so it's much more portable but if you need a lot of faders especially in like a house of worship application where people like to have a lot of faders available for them you can choose that larger size and this is the q7d so this is the largest size that we've got very familiar looking to the older series but kind of more of a modern twist do you want to give me an overview of what kind of the some of the differences are sure i think one of the main important things that we try to do was really keep that easy to use feel that yeah, you could walk up and mix a lot of the things that are on the older queue are still here you've got a lot of knobs at the top for your parametrics your comp your gate that sort of thing there are all of the same buttons that you had however some of the differences that we've done is now we've got a scribble strip yeah that's nice. and so essentially what you can do is change the layout to optimize your workflow and then your channel naming will be there for you so instead of putting a bunch of different pieces of tape down yeah. for example that's now right on the console. The familiar things will be the mix selects on the right hand side. And we have more mixes and more groups and more auxes available as well. And we've got the fader layer buttons as well. So you can put different layouts on different layers. I see there's a larger touchscreen on here. Yep. We've got a new seven inch capacitive touchscreen on here. Uh, you can see that the user interface is in a more dark mode yes. um, and it's a much cleaner interface. I also really like it's got a matte surface to it. So even in the studio, here with the lights shining directly on it it's not reflecting and glaring at you so that's kudos to you guys on that one there was a lot of thought put into all of the things on the surface we've got more soft keys available so if you want to do mute groups and tap delays those are all customizable and some interesting things that, that went in here as well if i press the view button over here my soft key layout will come up right on the touchscreen. Depending upon if I had different scenes in those touchscreen, the touchscreen would reflect what the different soft keys were doing for yep. that layout. Looking at the back of the desk, I see there are a couple new additions from the older series. One of them is a USB-C interface. Sure, we've done a bunch of things for, to help you record either to different media or directly to your computer. Okay. Some of that stuff comes over from our other console lines. So this has Q drive in it. Okay. So I have the ability to multi-track record or playback directly to an SD card right. or from an SD card. And I have a USB-C interface on the back as well. So I can connect that directly to my computer. The console will show up as a sound card and I can record to my laptop or play back from it as well for things like virtual sound check. The SD recording, how many channels is that? It depends on the sample rate. So I can do 32 by 32 at okay. 48 kilohertz or it will record at 96 kilohertz, but I'm limited to a 16 by 16 interface. Okay, what about the USB-C interface? The USB-C is 32 by 32. Can you also change the sample rate on that one? Yes. What's the uh, USB-A on the front used for? So USB-A has a couple of things that it does. One is for loading to or from show files. So the entire configuration of the console can be saved on a thumb drive and moved from one console to another. I can also do stereo record or playback to that USB-A connection, but I no longer have the ability to do multi-track. Let's talk about applications. Who 
is the target audience for the new Q series? There's gonna be a wide range for that as this fits into a lot of different places. For example, House of Worship, Yep. you have the ability to have different sizes and, and have the faders all laid out in front of you. So a non-technical user can go up to the console and feel very comfortable, yeah. especially if they're coming in from an analog console. That's the other nice thing about Q is that we have a lot of local preamps available right on it. So you can essentially put it in the place of almost any console. I think this will do really well in education, that elementary, middle school, auditorium type application too. Yes, music education is a very important place where we'll see these utilized, as well as people that are doing smaller tours or maybe doing weekend bands, things like that. Let's dive into software. You mentioned that there are a whole bunch of new upgrades to the software in the Q series. So let's let's jump into those. Sure. As I said, we've got a new FPGA. It gives us a lot more processing power. So we did right. some more things with that. One of those is in the effects section. Okay. So we have six effects engines now available. You've got four dedicated sends and four dedicated stereo returns that don't eat from your channel count. So the other two can be used just as like inserts? Sure, you could use them as inserts or you could eat one of your mixes and add another aux to send to those okay. effects units as well. Next up, I see scenes. You wanna give me a rundown of what has changed from the scene architecture? We've increased the number of scenes that you have. So you now have 300 scenes available and we've got a cue list editor, which we grabbed from some of our other yeah. consoles. And what that allows me to do is take the scenes that have been saved where they are in their numbering scheme and then rearrange them in a better workflow so I can go okay. from one scene to the next. So for example, if a band were to change their set list or you might have to change something about a, a musical that you're working on and rearrange some scenes, it's way easier to do it on the cue list editor. One of the cool features that I heard about in the software on this new desk is the gain assistant and the auto gain. You wanna give me a rundown of what those are? So gain assistant and auto gain are two new features that we added to this console. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the gain assistant. Okay. That allows me to select one or multiple channels and it will look at the incoming signal and try to set my preamp to a nominal level. Auto gain works sort of in the inverse way that the gain assistant does. Okay. Once I've got the gain set, it will, the auto gain will look for clips in the audio and bring it down gradually to make sure that I don't have any distortion in my signal. Okay. So like that drummer that always saves it for sound check, but then later on during the show gets all excited, starts bashing away. It's gonna look at those peaks and then be like, oh, you're clipping too much and, and bring it down. Yep, and you can leave those running in the background. Oh, cool. Another exciting feature on the desk is the feedback assistant. Can you show me what that does? Sure. We have our left, right out and all of our 12 mixes. And for each one of those, I have the option to put in either a 28 band graphic EQ okay. or a feedback assistant. So right now it's a graphic EQ, but I'm gonna change that to my feedback assistant. All right. The feedback assistant gives me 16 filters, which can be either in a live mode, which is dynamic, or in a fixed mode where they grab feedback and lock it in so that it's gone forever. So you can add that to each one of your outputs, and there are eight detectors that can work in a live mode that allow it to find those feedback frequencies and remove them automatically. So as a sound engineer, what you're saying is I can turn on the feedback assistant, I can go out, ring a monitor, get it to feedback, and it's gonna pull those, those frequencies out? That's correct, and having the option to either leave those in a live mode or a fixed mode means they will stay gone forever, or you can have it return frequencies back into your EQ so you're not always hashing things up. So I noticed there's a network port on the back. What is that for? Sure, the network port is for external control. So we have two apps available. So there's the Q4U app, which is a personal mixing app that somebody can run on their phone, uh, basically to have control of their own wedge mix or their in-ear monitor mix. And then we've got the MixPad app, which allows an engineer to walk around with an iPad um, and mix from anywhere in the room. How many devices can we have attached to the desk at one time? It's up to eight devices. So I can have two mix pads and six phones, or I could have up to eight phones connected at any given time. Okay, one of the other cool features I saw was there's a tally now of showing how many people are connected. Yeah, it can it will tell you how many of the mix pads. It, it just gives you an overall number of how many devices are connected for natural. It's clear that this board is gonna be a real winner for a lot of different categories of people. The combination of the new hardware available and the new software features inside make this a great pick for almost anybody. We've got the Q5, 6, and 7 available with the Dante variant, so you get a lot of different flexibility there. And it's that same iconic design that we're used to, all with the new technology. Thanks, Chris, for giving us the rundown on the new Q series. If you are interested in the Q series or more information on really any of the Allen & Heath products, reach out to your Full Compass salesperson.